Welcome back to Immortal Empires. Today we're going to be carrying on with our Krokgar series. And I think we do actually have an upgrade here in uh, Krokgar's army. There we go. Our Scar veteran here has a level up. So let's go ahead and spend that one. Uh, to start off the episode, he has all of his weapon strength. Uh, does he have everything here? He does. So let's go ahead and give him protection of the old ones. Uh, gives him some spell resistance. Why not? Uh, because we do end up targeting our own people a lot when we're casting magic with Lord Croak. Now, we have to go ahead and kill some of these dwarves. It looks like Forek has gotten brave and ventured in a different direction compared to his army. These two armies here are both recruiting, so it would be nice if we could attack them as well. And they do have a garrison behind them, though. But look at this, we have a lot of dinosaurs. We can't even get close to reaching Forrick, sadly. And I feel if we wedge ourselves in here, then we're going to find ourselves in a nasty 3v1 situation. However, yeah, that's almost three stacks. Versus two stacks of dinosaurs, I think we would actually come out heavily on top, right? It's a shame that this is kind of a choke point. We need to bring, uh, try and bait Forrick to attack, although we don't really have an army up here. Let's see, maybe we can tell Tic-Tac-Toe to attack Forrick as well. Uh, if we go in here, we go to Tic-Tac-Toe and we say attack target. Maybe I can click on Forrick here. I don't think it's going to let me. Oh, no, there we go. Uh, so maybe they will attack Forrick for us. And that should be all good. Um, however, it really depends where he moves. I don't think he can catch up to him either. We're not going to take attrition here, so let's actually start moving closer to the dwarves. We're not in reinforcement range, are we? We're not. Okay, that should be fine. And then Zun Batar here. Uh, we're going to take him back over here. Just so he can actually start recruiting some dinos in his army as well. Now, all of the dinos take two turns, which is a little bit annoying. We could get some Stegodons here. I think that's might what uh, that's what we might go for. Although, how long until we get the upgrade? Okay, it's still quite a few turns before we get access to other dinos. What blessed units do we have? Not many. Right, let's go ahead and recruit some... We'll get the revification crystals in first, just so they can heal our army. And then maybe... No, we can't do um, allied recruitment here either. That's fine. It's fine. Right, let's go ahead and check some of our other armies. We have Uaxti. He's over fighting the Tomb Kings, or trying to. Tic-Tac-Toe has some armies over here as well. I think the Tomb Kings are actually all dealt with, right? Let's go ahead and park ourselves in here. Oh no, we have Aranessa and King Jenna there. We have another Aranessa army here. Uh, Belagar's there as well. Things are getting spicy uh, over in this part of the land. I don't think they would team up. Let's see. If we put Porridge here, maybe we can bait uh, the Tomb Kings to attack us. We'll have to see what happens on this one. Uh, we could be in a bit of trouble here, actually. What's the garrison like here? It's basically non-existent. We could recruit someone, although... What can we even recruit here? Not much, right? Hmm, we're going to have to see how this plays out. But once we beat these armies back, this area should be relatively safe. So it's not too big of a deal if we lose. We can just recapture. That's fine. We do have this army here recruiting all of our Saurus units. Let's go ahead and get some more Spear units. And then that army is basically ready. And then, of course, we do have Tebchik here. Uh, let's continue. Just go ahead and recruit some more Javelin units. Uh, in case Forek does attack here, we're going to have to fight him back. Now, we can get access to some technology as well. Income from mines and quarries plus 200%. That's crazy. I'm actually going to go ahead and get that one. We get that in nine turns. That would boost our income a ton. And then what we can also do, let's go ahead and upgrade some buildings. So Quatar here. Can get an upgrade let's go ahead and upgrade the food and uh, that's absolutely fine then Kasabar, we could upgrade this we don't have any defense here yet that really sucks let's go ahead and build some defense and hope it survives and then we can also go ahead and build a geomantic pylon because we don't have one of those yet over here either and hopefully Forek doesn't attack this and win uh do we have any diplomacy for this turn Let's see. I don't think so. Defender of the 
And I don't think we have any peace treaty. We can make peace with these dwarves, but they're not even an issue right now. So let's not bother with that. Let's go ahead to turn one to one here. And we'll see what Forek and the other dwarves do. Okay, so the Tomb Kings actually attack our settlement. We've got no chance of saving that, but maybe Aranessa will now attack the Tomb Kings. We'll have to see um, whether they take the settlement as well. Okay, so luckily for us, they did just sack the settlement and didn't take it. However, if we look on this coast here, there's plenty of enemy armies moving in, um, including these two Aranessa armies as well. We're going to have to deal with this. And Kassabar has been besieged by Forik, so hopefully there's an uh, opportunity there. Tic-Tac-Toe uh, doesn't really care about the target here. He's still going to attack these dwarves, so maybe we should have left him alone and gone to take Forik ourselves. Karakazorn vote have been obliterated, so there's one dwarf army dealt with, and the wild hunt begins. Orion, king in the woods and master of the wild hunt, is born anew. On the eve of the vernal equinox, the elite wild riders select a candidate to bear the mantle of the immortal elven king for the year ahead. Now that Queen Ariel has done her secret work, Orion storms back into the world once more. As ever, he immediately calls a wild hunt to clear the forest of undesirable outsiders. The herald of the hunt sounds the horn, signalling the elves and forest spirits to fight in Athel Loran's defence. A primal urge to expel the forest's enemies that none can ignore. So Orion will now behave more aggressively towards his neighbours. Luckily we're not a neighbour of Orion. Um, I wish he was a neighbour though, so he could help deal with all of these dwarfs. Let's see, they don't really have a force here. No. I should probably start bringing one of my armies up to deal with Forrick. And... Let's see, do we need Krokgar to go north? I would rather take Krokgar into a siege. We could actually swap some units over here as well. Because I don't need this regiment of renowned unit, that's for sure. And I kind of want even more Carnosaurs, which we have here. So let's go ahead and do some trading. Uh, I would give you one, two, three, four, five, and one of these. And what are you going to give me in return? One, two, three, four, five... Okay, maybe we don't need the revification crystal. No, I do want one. Let's go ahead and give up one carnosaur. That should be fine. Now Krukgar's army is uh, looking truly badass. We could go ahead and fight these dwarves. And um, with this army, we're going to go ahead and start marching towards um, Forik here. If Forik attacks him, I think we can win that. Uh, let's go ahead and attack this army. It should be an easy win. Okay, they actually retreat, which leaves Karak Zorn open. Uh, it gives us a close victory on an auto resolve. Should we go ahead and fight this one manually? Uh, let's see. I have two banners here. What do they actually do? So we have the Scarecrow banner. Uh, minus eight leadership for enemies in range, but only affects flying units. Okay. We'll put down Krog, I guess. And the banner of swiftness gives Wayfarer, Strider, and plus 30% speed. Now, what is something that's super slow? 50 speed, 40 speed... I think we should pull it on our revification crystals so they can move around. Although, actually, maybe we pull it on Lord Croak. He's only got 34 speed, so if we put on Lord Croak, he can move around a bit more. Uh, now he has 44 speed. There we go. And I think we will go ahead and fight this one manually. Uh, let's go ahead and take down, uh, I assume this is Forex Capital, and jump into a cinematic battle here. Here we go then, Krokgar and his many Scar veterans and Carnosaurs here charging into battle. And uh, that Carnosaur had quite a cool pattern on his tail, I just noticed. I think that's our Regiment of Renown unit. But here we go, charging in, trying to break down the g uh, the gate. L Lord Croak throwing down um, a ward save buff there as well, just to make sure we don't take too much damage. And I think we just got a magic spell cast off onto the wall as well. And I think we're already going to cast a second lot of magic here into these dwarf warriors and we're also going to end up summoning a unit of feral carnosaurs in behind just for good measure in fact we managed to summon them so they cover two units and we have broken through the gates as well so some good timing there uh, definitely wasn't planned i don't think but here we go all of the carnosaurs now charging into battle we're going to see them absolutely tear through the dwarves uh, when we're talking about mass the dwarves definitely can't Stand their ground against the Carnosaurs and already just see an absolute chaos as they go in and uh, just chomp down and everything. Bit of a jump there as well. Already blood everywhere. And oh, do you know what? I think 
the Carnosaur is quickly becoming my favorite unit in all of Warhammer, uh, the Total War games at least. Just seeing them chomp through absolutely anything is so satisfying. It's really amazing. I think it's even... I'm loving Skaven, but... Oh, let's just look at these Carnosaurs. And we throw down some more magic as well as Krokgar <laughs> jumps in there. We have our other Regiment of Renown unit as well. I think that's just Shredder of Lustria in just behind... Uh, he's already covered in blood as well as he chomps his way through the dwarves. And there we go. We throw down another ward save buff as well. Lord Croak is definitely a good addition to this army. Uh, he's able to do a lot for us. And we also have that revification crystal now. So we can heal a friendly unit up to seven times. So that's also going to keep our army in tip-top shape. And already we've basically won the initial phase of the siege here. We've managed to break through their lines. And you can already see some of our Carnosaurs advancing, advancing into the settlement. Croc guard to the right here, trying to break down this barricade so he can go through and hopefully capture this capture point here. And we'll see how successful he manages to do that. Meanwhile, all the Carnosaurs going around to the left, they've found another unit of Dwarf Warriors to feast upon. So let's go ahead and get a close-up of that. And we'll see. Let's get a proper close-up. It's hard to keep the Carnosaurs in frame here, uh, jumping around everywhere. And there we go, a little swipe of the tail. Already not many dwarfs left here. Uh, these are really an awesome unit. I don't know how many times I can say it in different ways. And uh, just look at the pattern on this carnosaur as well with the yellow stripes. That uh, does look really cool, a bit of blue on there as well. Uh, especially blended in with all of the blood. But I think the dwarfs are essentially wiped out, at least on this side of the map. Let's go ahead and try and look at the health bars here. There we go, and their leadership is broken. You don't see that too often. In the background, we do have some crawlers. Uh, of course, we do have missile resistance on most of our Carnosaurs now, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. And then the Shredder of Lustria doing his thing. And then in the background, I forget the name of this unit, the Thunderous one. There we go. This is usually a ranged unit. He's gone on to take her on these crawlers over here, and he's done a very good job of that. Meanwhile, in the background, you can see that Krokgar has now moved on to the capture point, and he is capturing this capture point. He does have help from one of his Scar veterans, still yet to get his Carnosaur. And also summon some feral cold ones in here. A bit more uh, towards the same scale of the dwarfs. But still, uh, you definitely wouldn't want to face one of these on the battlefield. But it looks like we're actually going to capture this capture point. I think we have actually already captured it if we go ahead and turn on the UI. So this capture point is now ours. There's less towers to hit us. All of our units moving up through the settlement now. We do have some dwarf warriors here. As well as some scurry stone hearts. Uh, maybe that's a regiment of renown unit. I'm not too sure there. Uh, but it looks like they've got some great weapons as Arcanasaur comes charging in. And just look at the Shredder of Lustria. The scale of that thing is insane. You thought Arcanasaur was big? Look at this guy. He's four or five times the size. Um, even Krokgar there uh, looks tiny compared to the Shredder of Lustria. It's probably... I don't use regiment of renown units very often. Uh, but the Shredder of Lustria has definitely won my heart over the episodes here. This Carnosaur uh, having an absolute play day here. You would think with all of these dwarves, uh, they would be able to stand up to against it, but just look at them go. Uh, absolute carnage. And I think we're going to get some magic off here as well. Lord Croak, uh, ready to cast off his magic. There we go. We see it building up. Boom, absolute carnage. Sends them flying and we throw down a ward safe, but just for good measure as well. Make sure our units stay in tip-top shape. Now, we can't really see the effect of the revification crystal going off, but I can assure you, I mean, just look at our health bars here. He has been healing uh, units throughout this battle, so he's been very useful, and uh, I definitely like this unit now a lot. You can see Lord Croak coming through in the background as well. Uh, I'm not too sure how many dwarves are left. If we look at the balance of power, uh, it's definitely in our favor, though, as we're just trying to clean up now. It looks like there's the leader of the garrison, there might still be a Dwarven Lord somewhere. There he is. Uh, so Story Crackbrow is over here. We do have some Feral Cold ones chasing after him. But I don't think they're going to last too long. Uh, doing a tiny bit of damage to him. But he should be able to stand off against them relatively easy. If we go over here though. You can see some Carnosaurs coming to join the battle. Maybe they'll help. And Krokgar just capturing the main capture point here as well. Um, so that will also definitely give us a win. As so we come around here. You can see Lord Croak just sitting behind casting his magic. All of our army here just sweeping up these dwarfs. We do have a unit of dwarf warriors, uh, but I think it's just a matter of time here. Before the victory is ours, you can see these feral cold ones. Uh, they're not going to last too long at all. If we go in here, let's go for a close-up. 
And in fact, uh, he just wiped out the entire unit. I think they just expired. Of course, they only stay for so long. So let's see what this guy can do. I think it's the only dwarf left, left which is basically um, preventing us from getting the victory. It does look like a Carnosaur has seen him. This is going to be a mighty showdown here. Can he take on a Carnosaur? It doesn't look like it. There we go. Let's move the camera a bit. It's very hard to keep them in frame. And there's the rest of our army. I really don't think he stands much of a chance. In fact, look at his health. His health is already uh, halfway gone. And there we go. He is starting to retreat. His leadership is broken, which you really don't see too often from a dwarf there, especially a dwarf lord. And that is a decisive victory for us. There we go. Decisive victory there. It wasn't too bad. And that revivification crystal definitely coming in handy. Uh, I think now we know we only need one of these in each army because it does have quite a lot of uses. Seven uses there. And we really did take minimal casualties. Uh, we actually lost zero models. But of course we don't have any Cyrus in the army now. But let's get straight back to the campaign map. We've got to beal up some more dwarfs. There we have it. 2,600 XP. 1,000 gold as well. Not a lot. Uh, but we can go ahead and occupy this settlement again now. Kick out the dwarfs and uh, send them packing. Let's see, we did get some level ups as well. Krokar now level 46. Uh, he's getting on nicely. Uh, what can we actually level up on him now? Um, ah, we were going for ancient cunning for that ambush success chance. Let's go ahead and get some more of that. I do like the sound of that. And then Lord Croak as well. He also has a level up. Let's see, we have all of the magic abilities that we want. Now, I do wonder, uh, is there anything up here? Leadership aura size plus 50% and characters aura leadership effect plus 10%. Uh, wound recovery time. Missile resistance. Uh, let's go ahead and get some of that missile resistance. That would be uh, a nice addition. And then one of our Scar veterans also hitting level 25. Let's see, what can we do for you? We've got speed or we have leadership. I don't think leadership is a problem right now. So let's go ahead and get some speed on you this guy's level 24 let's get protection of the old ones i think they get that spell resistance going and then same with you let's get protection of the old ones this guy's level 25 as well so let's go ahead and give him some speed somehow they're all leveling up at a different rate now uh, i'm not quite sure how that's happened but it's happening let's go ahead and give you some weapon strength and then this guy's uh, he still doesn't have his carnosaur he's only one level away from it though let's go ahead and give him some weapon strength and these guys are doing a ton of damage right now and i do wonder um will we get a full army just full of these scar veterans on their carnosaurs i would very much like to i think that would be awesome and look at this, this army is already um, ready to carry on and take the fight to the doors. So they do have a four stack of air, which might be a bit of a challenge. But other than that, it should be relatively easy to progress through here now. And we don't have to, oh, they can use the underway, but I don't think we have to worry about over here. And we should be able to take on Forek relatively easy. Uh, let's see, we also have Uraxti. We need to go ahead and deal with this. Let's go ahead to uh, Owl Hake. Um, not sure that's how you pronounce it, but we need to go and defend there. And then Prigel over here. Let's see, there's two armies. One belonging to Aranessa, one belonging to the Tomb Kings. We could probably take this on relatively easy though. Yeah, they are running away. Uh, let's carry on and chase them. That would be a decisive victory because we have the help. Well, the garrison's not much help, is it? If we auto-resolve this, it's low casualties. So I think we will go ahead and auto-resolve that one. There we go. We didn't take too many casualties. 4,300 XP, 1,600 gold. We could take the replenishment. Uh, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and take the extra gold. And then we can park ourselves inside the settlement to get that replenishment. There we go. And Prigel did gain a level up as well. So let's see, what can we do for him? He's actually looking pretty decent. Let's go ahead and give him some extra speed. And then, oh, we could have got Ancient Cunning, actually. Let's go ahead and get Ancient Cunning. So we can try and capture some people in an ambush. We could attack Aranessa's army this turn. However, I think I'm inclined to wait until we have that replenishment. Um, just so we sell ourselves up for success rather than failure there. Uh, because there are a lot of armies around here. I think Xandri is going to fall. Yeah, there's not much of a garrison that here at all. Uraxdi can attack it next yes, turn if, it, if they do take it. But yeah, we've got a lot of enemies at the moment. And then this army yes, over here should. is basically ready. Let's go ahead and recruit one more unit. Let's see, can we get something special in here? Uh, we could get a Bastilladon. 
I don't really like them though too much. Maybe we just go ahead and get another Saurus uh, unit here. Get another Saurus warrior. And then this army is ready to go as well. Now that looks like everything for this turn. Let's go ahead and check our diplomacy. There's nothing going on here. Any trade agreements? We could get a trade agreement with Imric. Also, the Exiles of Nehek are quite a way away. They're not currently fighting against any other lizards. So we could do that if we really wanted to. In fact, I think I will. Let's go ahead and get that trade agreement. He will also give us 700 gold. So we'll do that. And then if we go ahead with Imric, I think Imric we can also afford to get a trade agreement with. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Another thousand gold as well. There we go. That's looking nice as well. Is there anything else we can do? I don't think so. Not closer to any confederation. Um, not close to any peace treaties either that we would want to accept. Let's go ahead and do some building maintenance. Is there anything here that can be upgraded? Let's see. We can upgrade Teotika. Uh, let's see. If we upgrade this, we then have access to Skin Coracles. I think we need this building so we can build um, a higher level of Dino. That's what's going on there. And then we have the Uatek down here. Uh, let's go ahead and upgrade this. Bit of extra income for us. We still have 7k gold. There's nothing up here that needs upgrading. Let's see. We could upgrade this because the Pools of Despair probably isn't going to be attacked. So let's put that up to tier 3. Then we're also going to build some defenses in here. Let's put some growing as well. Uh, Zandri, there's no point building there. But we only have 48 gold left now anyway. We do have some rights we can... Ah, it's just this one. Um, hopefully we could do a right of primeval glory against uh, another 45 turns. Okay, might be a few episodes before we do that. But let's go ahead to turn 122 now. Belagar is moving in, and we're definitely angered with the wolves a little bit here. We can't, we can't fight against that, so we're gonna have to auto resolve. Um, but we can strike back the next turn or the turn after, I believe. And Forrick is also moving in with an attack here. Now it gives us a valiant defeat. I think the auto resolve is much more generous than what I could do here, because all we really have is skinks. We do have some Saurus units. Do we have walls on this settlement? And again, even if we have walls, um, I don't think I can personally uh, win this battle. <laughs> um, so I'm going to auto-resolve it, and then we'll have to just take it back the turn after. Um, at least Forrick will be weakened here, and then we can move in our dinos and then chomp down on him, and then he's dealt with. Uh, so I will go ahead and auto-resolve that one. Okay, Forgrad, uh, Forgard would have won a peace treaty. I don't even know where he is on the map. Um, quite a way away from us. Uh, I'm going to say no. Charging in. The fervor of your great Saurus warriors to combat agents of the ancient enemy is admirable. Though it is starting to verge on fanaticism in some divisions. Risking mistakes that could allow chaos a greater purchase on lustrous sacred jungles and temple cities. Is such recklessness in keeping with the great plan, or should the slan Lord Mage Priests instruct their underlings to instill caution in the ranks? Let them charge headlong. Leadership plus 10, but we lose some casualty. I think we're going to need the casualty replenishment, though. Let's uh, go ahead and conserve and defend here. Uh, ally mobilizes against target. Crooked Moon have been obliterated. There we go, another faction going there. And settlement lost. We did lose Phyrus to Belagar. Uh, Tepchik has been killed in battle. Ah, uh, yes. Um, this was down here. Over here. Uh, luckily, Forrick didn't actually choose to raise or occupy the settlement. So by auto was over there, we didn't actually lose too much. And then we have some lords ready for duty as well. Uh, but I think that's going to be it for this episode. A bit of a shorter one today. Uh, currently have a bit of a health predicament. So I'm not able uh, to record as long. And that's why we had to skip an upload yesterday. But I will be back tomorrow with another Crusade the Kings free video. And back on Wednesday with another Crook Gar video. Uh, so make sure to tune back in then. Thank you for watching. And I will see you next time.